Jake here. Thank you for taking a trip to the past with me. The original podcast version of The Americans will be released weekly, but if you don't want to wait, then go to jakebible.substack.com and become a paid subscriber. You'll receive access to all of The Americans as well as early release novels, audiobooks, and other exclusive extras. That's jakebible.substack.com. Now enjoy the original podcast production of The Americans. Cheers. Warning. This podcast reading is for mature audiences only. You will not be warned again. Welcome to the podcast reading of Jake Bible's The Americans, book two in the Dead Mech Apex Trilogy. The Americans is a side quill to Dead Mech, meaning it takes place simultaneously with book one. You can listen to this novel first or start with Dead Mech. Go to jakebible.com for more information on this podcast, Dead Mech, and other fiction by Jake Bible. Enjoy. Hey, welcome back to the Americans, everybody. Thanks for joining me this week. Um, There won't be an episode next week because I will be completely off the grid. In fact, I have to have a little solar charger just to make sure my cell phone is charged up for the four days. I will be up at Floyd Fest in Floyd, Virginia, listening to some groovy tunes, camping, having a good time. It should be fun. But um, there's just no way I'm leaving halfway through the week, so there's no way I'm going to get anything uploaded and um, ready for Sunday, because I'll be back late Sunday night, and if anything goes wrong, I'll have no way to fix it, so on and so forth, blah de blah de blah So there'll be a break next week, and then we'll return to the regularly scheduled programming the following week. Um, hey, I want to say thank you to all you who bought uh, 31 Days of Halloween. I definitely saw a little uptick in sales, you know, after I asked everybody if you wouldn't mind purchasing that last week. And, um, yeah, thank you. I mean, it's only 99 cents. So, when I think about it, I get about 2,000 downloads per episode, per week, week and a half, right in there. So, you know, if everybody bought a 99 cent ebook. I'd be very grateful and happy. And I mean, I'm sure my time and effort's worth 99 cents, right? I'm staring at the guy who hasn't bought the ebook. I'm staring hard. Cold, hard stare, motherfucker. 99 cents? You got 99 cents, right? Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Anywho, um, enough intimidation by audio. Yeah, I'm intimidating. I'm scary. Scary. That's about it. Okay, I want to thank everybody for listening, as always, and all your support. You guys rock. And I really hope you all enjoy the episode. Um, It's going to be crazy, you know, from here on out, pretty much. There'll be a little bit of info, a little slow down, just so you don't pee your pants. I don't want anybody at work or driving along getting freaked out and pissing themselves. That's, that's just, you know, not appropriate. So I don't want to contribute to that. I'm a good guy that way. I'm a giver. All right, that's enough rambling for the day. Enjoy. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, y'all. Chapter 24 Beth's eyes shot open and she struggled not to scream as knowledge, knowledge that wasn't hers, slammed into her mind. She knew who she was. She was Elizabeth Laughlin. But she was also someone else. She was Brian Lisbon. Dr. Brian Lisbon, who had been living in another part of the world for the past twenty years, and he was dead. Murdered. But not before he uploaded his consciousness, uploaded it for transport to the vessel for retrieval. Beth gasped and stood up, her mind focused on the thing that was Heather, a thing that was only feet from her and coming at her fast. No! Beth screamed, her hands outstretched. Heather stopped instantly, frozen in place, her clawed hands just inches from Beth. What did you do? Melissa panted. She was curled into a ball at Beth's feet. You were gone so long. Beth looked about her in confusion. She was no longer sitting at the bottom of the stairs, but behind a pile of crates on the far side of the cargo hold. Then her heart broke as she saw the crumpled and mutilated bodies of Billy and Alex. Her hand shot to her mouth, and she struggled not to throw up. They saved us, Mel whispered, peering around the crates. They gave me time to drag you back here and... Until you woke up. How long? Beth asked. Ten minutes, maybe? Melissa said, choking back tears. 
Billy was so brave. After Heather killed Alex, Billy held her off. He fought hard, Beth, but she was just so vicious. Melissa began to sob, her arms hugging her knees. They're gone, Beth. Everyone I love is gone. Everyone I know is gone. I'm alone. Beth knelt next to Melissa and put her arms around her. Melissa clutched at her desperately, her hot, wet tears soaking into Beth's robe. You're not alone, Mel. You have me. Beth suddenly pushed away and stood up, vaulting over the crates. She ducked around Heather's immobile form and approached the corpses of Alex and Billy. They're dead. This is great. Melissa stood also and wiped her nose with her robe sleeve. Great? Are you fucking insane? Don't make me hate you, freak. Beth looked kindly at Melissa. Let's not go backwards, Mel. No, what I meant was I can save Heather. I can't bring her back to life, but I can take the monster out. I can fix her, Mel. And when Alex and Billy reanimate, I can fix them, too. The BTT's calm buzzed to life. Hey, anyone there? Styles asked. Can someone tell me what the fuck is going on? Sorry, Styles, but we're in the middle of something right now, Beth called back over the comm. Yeah, well, I'm in the middle of flying something right now and kind of need some info from Al. Styles snapped back. Either that or we can crash right into the Chinese shield and all die. I thought Alex said we could go over the shield, Melissa asked. We can, but I need to know where exactly. Styles growled. Al has the coordinates. Yeah, um, Alex is dead, Beth admitted, but hopefully he'll be back soon and then I can fix him. Styles sat there in the pilot's seat, trying to process what he heard. Mr. Styles, are you still there? Beth asked. Did you say dead? Styles cleared his throat. <clears> throat> like, um, dead? Dead? Bloody and gored, Mel answered. But Freak Beth has a plan. How much time do we have? Uh, Fifteen minutes max. Styles could hear the girls conversing quietly. Hello? Can I speak to an adult? Get me Billy if he isn't hurting too much from scab withdrawal by now. Uh, Billy's dead too, Melissa replied. Jesus, fuck, what the hell happened down there? Heather killed them, Beth shouted, but I'm trying to fix that, so just be quiet for one goddamn minute. Um, uh, sorry. Styles said quietly, you all do your resurrecting thing and I'll just fly the plane. God, I thought he'd never leave us alone, Melissa said. Hey, didn't Alex say Heather had the code for the shield? Why not fix her first? Because once I start the process, I can't stop, Beth answered. And if those two come back while I'm working on Heather, then you'll have to deal with them yourself. Ah, uh, point taken. The two girls sat on the crates in their bathrobes, Melissa's torn and bloody, and watched the corpses of Alex and Billy closely. So, what happened in that brain of yours? Melissa asked. I mean, are you still you? You seem like you, but, uh, who are you? Beth thought for a moment. Yes, I'm still me, but I'm also Dr. Brian Lisbon, and he's a bit of a strange bird. Melissa looked sideways at Beth. Oh, shut it. What? Melissa joked. I didn't say anything. So, how is he strange? He, me, we, well, he's an American, but he's been living elsewhere for a couple decades now, Beth began, but stopped quickly as she saw Billy's head begin to twitch. That will have to wait. Beth got up and stood over Billy as the corpse's eyes shot open. She put a palm to his chest, yanking it back before he could lift his head and bite her arm. In a second, his whole body began to shiver and shake. Beth moved on to Alex and waited patiently. By the time Billy had stopped moving and his chest began to rise and fall with normal respiration, Alex's eyes opened also, and Beth repeated the procedure. They'll be fine as soon as they wake up, Beth told Melissa. Well, I hope they'll be fine. The nanotech should have preserved their brain functions, even with the viral modifications, but it's hard to tell from individual to individual. I'll have to take your word on that, Doc, Melissa grinned. Now, what about the one person that deserves saving and isn't a total fuck-up? Beth approached Heather and frowned. She's going to be hard. She was dead for a much longer period of time, and the nanotech probably reconfigured her brain structure accordingly. Beth looked at Melissa, her eyes grave. She probably won't be the same Heather you've always known. She could be, but... You don't want me to get my hopes up, right? Melissa asked. Beth nodded. Turning to Heather, Beth applied both hands to the sides of Heather's head and closed her eyes. 
She stayed that way for several minutes. Um, girls, Styles interrupted. Can it, cowboy? Melissa shouted. Five minutes before we go, Crunch, Styles stated, just saying. Done, Beth said. Heather began to shake, and Melissa rushed over to help Beth get her to the ground. Oh, what? Billy mumbled from behind them. Is, is this heaven? If so, then heaven sucks. Melissa laughed and dove onto Billy, hugging him fiercely. Can I get a little of that? Alex whispered. Just try not to crush me. Melissa reached over and took Alex's hands in hers, refusing to let Billy go. Hard to breathe, Billy gasped. Mel pushed herself up and helped Billy, then Alex to their feet. Alex opened his shirt and looked back at the place where bullet wounds should have been. I feel good as new, he said. Whopper of a headache, but that's about it. Not bad for being dead and resurrected, Beth said. Although, technically, you are still dead. What? Melissa, Billy, and Alex exclaimed. Yeah, you're not really human anymore. You're more like the walking techno-dead. You're being run and held together by the nanotech. The three stared at her for a moment. Techno-dead? You mean like we're high-tech versions of those old zombie tales? Billy finally asked. Zombies aren't tales, Billy, Beth said matter-of-factly. They're quite real. Two minutes, Styles yelled over the comm. Anything? Sorry, Styles. Alex is here now, Beth replied. Styles needs the coordinates for going over the Chinese wall. Fuck, Alex shouted, running up the stairs to the cockpit. What coordinates? Billy asked. So we don't crash into the Chinese shield wall? Melissa answered. He's been freaking out like a little girl for a while now. Billy crouched next to Heather. How long until we know if Heather is, well, Heather? No way to say, Beth replied. What I just did has never been done before. It's all new to me. Grab on to something, folks, Styles yelled. We are ascending quickly and it's going to be rough. Billy wrapped his arms around Heather while Beth and Melissa braced themselves against the crates as the BTT angled sharply upward. They could all feel the push of the G-forces, the pressure increasing greatly the further and faster they climbed. This sucks, Billy shouted. You've made that clear, Billy, Melissa shouted back. Shut the fuck up. So much for the happy you're alive, Billy love, Billy sighed. Just as the force was becoming more than any of them could handle, the BTT leveled off and they all sighed with relief. We have now reached 45,000 feet and weather looks smooth from here until Lhasa. Thank you for flying Styles Airways and have a wonderful day. Oh, what's going on? Heather asked from between Billy's arms. Heather! Melissa shouted, shoving Billy aside, her arms outstretched. But before Melissa could embrace her aunt, Heather screeched and scrambled backwards. Who the fuck are you? She yelled, pushing herself to her feet, bringing her arms up in defensive position, ready to fight. Where the fuck am I? Melissa looked back at Beth, pain overtaking her features. Beth nodded sadly. Billy? Is that you? Heather finally asked. What, what the fuck happened to your face? You look like shit. You should see your face, Billy mumbled. What date do you think it is? Beth asked Heather, slowly walking towards her. Date? The fuck kind of question is that? Heather snarled. I know who Billy is, but who the fuck are you two bitches? Melissa couldn't help but smile at that. My name is Elizabeth Laughlin. Does that mean anything? Heather shook her head. She is Melissa Brenton. Do you know who that is? The fight seemed to leave Heather instantly. She looked at Billy for confirmation, and he nodded. Heather lowered her arms. Mel? Little Mel? But you... you're a woman. Melissa smiled weakly. Heather, we need to get you cleaned up, and then we'll have a very nice, long talk, Beth soothed. There's a lot you need to know. I fucking what? Heather shouted. You died and came back as a techno-zombie, Beth said. That's the simplest way to put it. There's nothing simple about any of this bullshit, Heather complained. You act like you know so fucking much, but look at you. You're what, 17? Technically, I'm only four, but that's another story, Beth said. Everyone stared at her. Um, what? Melissa finally asked. Four? Yes, but that's not really important at the moment, Beth said, turning to Heather. What is important is finding out what you last remember. Four? Melissa asked again. Drop it, Mel, Beth insisted. Heather? 
Heather sat there for a moment, looking stunned. I, I remember being in Russia with Al, and we'd just gotten back from our, our honeymoon, Alex said, coming back into the cabin. That would be spring of 2475. Heather stared at Alexander, tears welling in her eyes. Hey, sweetheart, welcome back. Heather leapt from her seat and grabbed Alex in a big hug, planting kisses all over his face and neck. He began to laugh and gently pushed her away. Well, I can honestly say I was never expecting that reaction ever again, Alex chuckled, taking Heather by the hand and sitting with her across from the others. I have to say I like it. He looked into Heather's eyes. Very much. Spring of 2475. Then that means, Billy mused, she doesn't know, Melissa finished. Doesn't know what, Heather asked. What aren't you telling me? It's not what we aren't telling you, dear, Alex began, taking both of Heather's hands in his and squeezing them affectionately. It's what you have forgotten. Shall I do the honors? Billy and Melissa nodded. We'll fill in what you don't know, Billy said. While you all catch up, I'm going to join Styles, Bess said, getting up and moving to the cockpit. We are probably in calm range of the Lhasa outpost. I have to make a report. Roger, Styles was saying as Bess shut the cockpit door. ETA 15 minutes. Yes, sir. I have the coordinates and weather looks clear. Yes, I have made night landings plenty of times. Roger, Styles out. They know we're coming? Beth asked, taking the co-pilot's seat. Yep, we'll be there soon, Styles said. I don't think the Chinese even know we're over them. Oh, they know, Beth laughed. They saw us coming 50 miles before we hit the border. Trust me. Styles eyed Beth cautiously. So, who am I speaking to right now? Elizabeth Lothlin, with a huge side of Dr. Brian Lisbon, Beth laughed. So are you a Mr. or a Mrs.? Styles asked. I'm all lady parts. That makes me a Mrs. Beth's smile disappeared. Brian Lisbon is dead. He died two weeks ago. I have his knowledge, his thoughts, even a few of his feelings, sorta, but I'm Beth Laughlin through and through. Styles nodded knowingly, then shook his head in confusion. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, but I trust you. I'm guessing you need a secure calm? I do. Thanks. Need some privacy? No. What I have to report will be calm and knowledge soon. Plus, there's too few of us left to be keeping secrets any longer. I don't know how many Americans survived, but the old ways of doing things are over. Roger that. been listening to the podcast reading of Jake Bible's The Americans. This novel and recording are protected under whatever latest, greatest Creative Commons license is out there currently. Share this all you want. Just don't even try to make a buck off it without the express permission of the author, me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, please go to jakebible.com. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Thank you for listening to this episode of the re-release of the original podcast production of The Americans. Don't want to wait each week for a new episode? Go to jakebible.substack.com and become a paid subscriber. Want more audiobooks? Go to jakebible.com for info and access to dozens of Jake Bible fiction audiobooks and ebooks. Cheers.